And if at first you don't succeed, blow the whistle. In this world of sport and leisure and recreation, the island offers an embarrassment of riches. The pony trek's progress is unhurried, but encroaches on the game which Scotland gave to the world. Worse than last time. Seven courses on the island have given rise to the expression, the golf stream. O Aring Vic Voyach, screen do Cleochas and Taurach. Bonny little Aaron, grand is thy mantle in summer. Bonny little Aaron indeed, a song of the fishing from last century. Well, in Arran, water is everywhere, except possibly in the household tanks during a long, hot summer, and there are some, but that's another story. The great waterfall at Glen Ashdale is a beautiful, sinuous torrent, its sills and its spray producing magical pictorial effects in a tumultuous descent. Some say it keeps Whiting Bay moist, but others offer an alternative explanation. And these are plants which are really adapted to living in very salty conditions. You'll know that in your own gardens, if you spread salt everywhere, it'll kill the plants. Well, these plants can survive here. We'll go on and see what else we can find. It's quite slippery here, so watch your feet. Ah, oh, this is a good one. Let's have a look in here. Can you come, gather around so that you can see in this pool here? We'll have a look and see what we can find in here. Life in a rock pool, by and large, is pretty rough. If you think of a fish living in the sea, it's in a constant temperature constant salinity, no worries. In a rock pool, some days you can be baked by the sun. In other days, you can be almost washed out by a storm. In other days, if you have a lot of rainfall, then the salinity of the water can drop right down. So the creatures which live here have a pretty rough life of it. Well, we'll start off now by looking at some of the plants and animals that you find in these pools. And we'll start off, I think, with looking at the more obvious ones. And even in a rock pool like this, you get this zonation in the same way that you would on the beach. Right around the edge here, we've got these small bits of seaweed with little tufts of fronds on them. And if you open up the fronds, you'll see that they've got little channels down the middle of them. The edges of all these fronds are really quite curled up. And then further down, as you go into the depths of the pool, you'll get different seaweeds. As well as the plants, we've got quite a variety of animals in here. To start off with, we have the whelks there. Now these, they look like snails, and they are similar to snails in many ways, but their diet differs. Your average garden snail is a vegetarian, but these are carnivores. What they do is they trundle along the bottom of the sea, and they'll find something like, say, a mussel. And they sit on the mussel, and they've got this 
tongue with hundreds of teeth on it, which exudes acid, and it bores a hole through the shell of the mussel, and then it starts to eat the mussel from the inside. What we'll do now is we'll go on and we'll have a look along the beach and see what we have on a sandy shore along the corner there. So if you'd like to follow me, we'll make our way along here. A wet sheet and a flowing sea. The great highways and byways of the Firth of Clyde for yachtsmen and anglers. And how about this for a study in contemplation? And uh, marginally more important, of yeah. concentration. For sea anglers, the conditions overhead are of minimal importance. Certainly a spot of sunshine is devoutly to be wished by the less committed. But although the chief concern is reeling them in, who knows what lies full fathom five? Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. The sounds of Rod and Rio were not part of the enchanted isle which Caliban knew, but five centuries before Shakespeare, an Irish sailor was fulsome in his praise. Aaron of the many stags, the sea reaches to its shoulder, sailings of long galleys past it. It is delightful for them when fine weather comes, fish in the sea round its white cliff, trout under the banks of its river. Delightful at all times is Aaron. And the yow cries for her lamb lost among the grey banes of the cairn, where men were laid to rest. But it danced in the wame of time and rings a stain to guard the sun turn and the new day door. It sings in the muirland lens by a tumult wall. Or ain an abbot broch the martyr's bane. And the song of the smithy is in its own way that of the country community. The smith, a mighty man is he, at work with his bellows. and the shining fire, the glowing shoe, and the anvil. In days gone by, the focal point of the Aran village, transfixed in time at the Heritage Museum in Brodick, and supplemented by a survey of parlour, lovingly recreated. Kitchen, functional, but stylish and gleaming. And the deep peace of the single bed in this glimpse of yesteryear with the distaff side for whom the Lord, having made time, made plenty of it. For one afternoon in August, the cattle show dominates the island's thinking. Come rain, come shine. And the faces reveal frequent degrees of intensity and conferral. sometimes disdain. And occasionally, as far as the young idea is concerned, delegation. Sedate in the main, things move at a fair old lick from time to time.
but the old days were I the best. Here, work is done, business transacted, and the day slowly passes. The great peaks slumber in the noonday sun serene and uncaring of wind and weather, of time and tide. Theirs is a watching brief in the island's story, and their sentinel stance has long preceded the coming of man, whose season and cycle is truly the work of the poet. It is an ageless sang, the all dial sings, in the burn borne along the screefit. By riven crags where the black raven brings the still-born lamb to its nest by the rowan root, and runnels hidden in the quarry heed, to stags and velvet where their leader fell, and hangs heavy with the fruit of his spent seat, making milk and horn for birth and do. To new in the dim ferny deeps, or the dank den where the braid torrent fires, our mossy rocks and their heath hanging shores, it sings where the ouzel dips and the wagtail creeps, and the otter dives and the quick truths scatter. Sign, doon again and out on the last run to the homes in the wide dale where the water winds softly by the bean fern, white in the sun, to meet the sea soundless at the flood of the tide. The gulls and waders stone hushed for the turn. It sings sleep to the clach indeed in graves of thorn, by the grey ruin where ain't their bands were cried. And as the Aran burn runs daily to the sea through the fitful tapestry of the changing seasons, winter, finally and remorselessly, hoves into view. My heart is moving me back to the wild shores, storm lashing the crops, calling me home. Enchanted Isle of 